Because of a mistake I made, my investment portfolio has gone down by more than the cost of a Lamborghini. Multiple Lambos. But hey, it could be worse. It may get worse. That's gonna cause the market to fall further than it has. But I know one thing, I won't be making the same mistake again. Because as the saying goes, those who can't learn from their mistakes are... How's it go again? I always forget this one. Oh, yeah. Those who can't learn from mistakes are doomed to repeat them. And my hope is that you, by learning vicariously through my experience, can learn to avoid making the same mistake in the first place, or at least make it less often. Because it's not just a mistake you make in investing. I'm sure you make it in all other areas of life too. And the cost can be bigger than some meaningless materialistic Lambo. This mistake can turn your priceless life into a poor, regretful bore fest. So here's what happened. It started with me making the opposite of a mistake in 2014. After my pre-retirement tour, I put two thirds of my savings into index funds and the other third into stocks like Google, Amazon, and Apple. Then in 2017, after selling my shares of a hostel that I co-founded, I did the same with Shopify. As you've probably been told before, stock picking is for dart throwing monkeys. But I couldn't help myself. These companies were all the rage in my wannabe online entrepreneur circles. But they didn't seem to get nearly as much hype in the less early and later majority worlds that my parents and their friends lived in. But I believe that it was just a matter of time. And when that time came, I would sell my shares to my parents' friends' investment advisors. Yeah, in a peanut brain nutshell, that was the full extent of my analysis. So, like a monkey, I threw my dart at those stocks. And I got lucky. Over the years, they multiplied in price. Until COVID hit. From one day to the next, it was as if all these wonderful companies had waken up with faces covered with pimples and ugly haircuts. And investors reacted like these companies had been scarred forever. I didn't get it. I figured they'd recover eventually. If anything, they'd be better than ever. So in March 2020, I doubled down. I sold half my index funds and bought companies that were the cat's meow in my circles, but not yet so with the mainstream. PayPal, Cloudflare, Lululemon, for example. And Carnival Cruises, because it was in the gutter getting spit on by everybody. More finger in the air dark throws. And as it turns out, for the most part, more luck for me. Crazy luck. Way sooner than I thought, these companies got early 2000s reality TV popular. Like, Paris Hilton popular. So their prices went berserk. I couldn't believe my luck. I mean, I thought they were cool companies. But this cool? This soon? It didn't make sense. Then, last September, I sat at a cafe and overheard high school bros on one table and grandmas on another table, both bragging about getting pieces of these companies. And that's when I felt pretty confident that things had blown way out of proportion. These companies' stocks were more popular than their products, which is when I made my mistake. I succumbed to what I made this video to warn you about. Wildly uneducated and stupidly risky stock picking? No, omission bias. Omission bias is our tendency to favor inaction over action. In my example, that meant favoring twiddling my thumbs over sticking to my plan, trusting my gut, and selling my now popular in the mainstream stocks. I'm gonna tell you my strategy for not making the same mistake next time, but before we get there, it helps to understand why you and I are emission biased. The first reason is obvious. It's easier to do nothing than something. That's why my lazy brain settled for convenient excuses like capital gains, taxes, and not knowing what to do with my money instead to justify my inaction. The second reason for omission bias is more interesting. Short-sighted regret avoidance. If you take an action, for example, you quit your job to start a new business, or you get married or divorced, or you buy or sell a stock and things go wrong, you'll regret it more than if you had done nothing and things had ended up equally bad. So since we're all regretophobes, we're biased against taking action. But here's why that becomes a problem. In the long run, it's the opposite. You'll regret inaction more than action. A lot more. Because your self-justifying brain will find ways to excuse its mistakes if you take action. But if you don't take action, you'll wistfully wonder what might have been. Which is exactly my case. It nags at me that I let omission bias stop me from sticking to my plan, my principles, and my gut in taking action. Obviously, I'm saying this all in hindsight. If the bubble was still blowing from my stocks, I'd probably be at that cafe cheersing those high school bros and grandmas and definitely not making this video. But here's the thing. If the bubble was still blowing and I had taken action and sold my stocks, yes, I would regret losing out on those gains in the short run, but in the long run, my regrets would be manageable because my brain would find ways to justify my actions and move on. That's the reality bending beauty of being admission biased rather than omission biased. It's not about being right more often, making more money, or wasting that money on Lambos. It's about defaulting to taking action rather than sticking to the status quo 
even if doing so sometimes backfires. So now what's my plan to avoid repeating the same mistake? To start something enriching that I've been doing in my personal life for almost seven years, but for some reason never got around to doing for my investing. Documenting my thoughts, i.e. writing them down and making more videos like this one. Doing so helps me sort out my thoughts and filter out the ones that are idiotic on closer inspection so I can come up with a more solid action plan. Then, after acting, I can review the results versus expectations and learn from that. And maybe most importantly, documenting opens up an undistortable line of communication between my current self and my future selves. That way I can hold myself accountable for not being omission biased. Be admission biased, you moron. Default to taking action. Hopefully this way, future me won't have to make more videos about my costly bias-driven mistakes. Speaking of which, if you're curious to follow what else I'm doing to minimize my mistakes and earn back my lost Lambos, wait a second, that's anchoring bias. No. Subscribe to the Young Adventure Route. Just do it. Don't be a mission biased.